Sandy Monroe is going to be here once again and I have a new job for him. I'm going to make him the CEO of Toyota for a day. Well, a responsible CEO who sees and cares about the future. Why? I'll tell you in just one second and we're going to start right now. Welcome to E4 Electric. If you are interested in everything that's going on in the amazing world of electric cars or you just like to see Sandy on this channel every month, well, that's perfectly fine. All you have to do is click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, so Sandy said this many times on this channel, on his channel, that Tesla is years and years ahead of its competition. Now, Toyota is not even in the game, but it is still a big, powerful brand with lots of resources and money but can it catch up to tesla at this point and if so how would you do it and i think that sandy is a perfect guy to answer that question before that a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by volkswagen id4 which i am now a proud owner of one of my favorite features is the enhanced voice command system. I can do a lot of things in my car using my voice, including opening the shade of the beautiful panoramic optional roof without taking my hands off the wheel. See if you will love the ID4 as much as I do by exploring the link in the description of this video. All right, Sandy. So first of all, it was nice hanging out with you finally in person when you were uh, here in California. Yep. Yes, it was. I, um, I got to tell you, that was a fabulous place you took us to for dinner. I, um, I really appreciate it. Um, and all we had to do is walk across the street from the hotel we were in. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. So it was good. We got a chance to have a few laughs together, a few beers, and, and <clears throat> we, we became famous. It was unreal. That was the part that blew me away. I don't know how many people... Uh, wanted their picture taken uh, with the two of us at the same time. It was like amazing. I, I, I really, I was really blown away at how many people recognized us. Some came up and said hi, but then these other guys, I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, we saw them, you know, doing this, oh, yeah, yeah, hi, hi. I don't know who you are, but, but anyways, it was, it was really, it was really good fun. It yeah, was really, really good too. Uh, yeah, we're in the heart of Silicon Valley, so a lot of people will, you know, watch both of our channels. That was really cool. So, yeah. but let's get back to business because you know you and everybody pretty much has uh, mentioned how far Tesla is ahead of everybody else. Even though this yeah. year we see all this amazing and really cool electric cars coming out. Uh, you know, F one fifty got a, a lot of rave reviews. Uh, but at the same time, I wanted to turn the tables on you today. And I wanted to give you a new job for a day. Um, I want to make you the new Toyota CEO for a day. And, you know, <laughs> what if you wake up in Mr. Toyota's body tomorrow and you have to run? <laughs> I, 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 listen, I'm, I didn't say it was an easy job. Oh, sorry. This, it's like this. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I didn't say it was an easy job. Oh, right? But um, no. Okay. So, you know, you wake up as a CEO of Toyota tomorrow. You want to catch up to Tesla as the leader in the industry. There's a lot of work to do because they have been, you know, electrification deniers. Um, what do you do and when? Mm. Let's start with the batteries. Like, what do you do about well, the actually, battery Actually, you know what? You know what? I'm, I'm thinking about something else. So Toyota went down the path of hydrogen and... Um, and quite frankly, no one else did. Um, now, they have the best fuel cell in the world. But the problem is that they have to have a hydrogen charge periodically. So, if I was in charge of Toyota, I would contact somebody called, a, a company called um, Plasma Kinetic. They, they have just uh, invented solid state hydrogen fueling. So you, you get this little box, a couple of these little boxes. Inside is a disc. As you need hydrogen, a laser focuses down on that disc. And then hydrogen is released from the disc that goes to whatever you want. In this case, it would be the, the fuel cell. You could buy these discs at a grocery store. They don't blow up, they don't burn. 
they're, they're hydride, they're solid. Um, now, remember I told you a long time ago, I was in, um, I was in China and, a, and they showed me this new technology that came from Australia. And to me, it looked like a house brick. And they said, oh, it's got hydrogen in it. And they showed me that hydrogen came out, but I didn't know how it worked. Well, uh, here's how it works. Um, it, it, a, a, a laser beam goes on top of that disc, goes down into that disc, Hydrogen comes out, it goes through a little processing tube to a compressor and then the compressor would put it into the, um, into the fuel cell. All of a sudden, I don't care. I don't care if, uh, if there's no, uh, if there's no uh, hydrogen stations around because you go to the dealership, buy a bunch of discs, put them in whenever you need, bring back the old ones, get a refund, and, uh, and then they recharge them. They, they put, and the best part is, the way they recharge them is by using sewer gas and uh, things like that. It, uh, so basically, it's doing two things. One, it's taking um, hydrogen out of the toxins that we're putting into the atmosphere, and two, it puts it onto this solid state disk, and three, it, uh, you can you could replace these things on your own and make it work. So that would be phase one. If, and by the way, you still know they, they still have to have batteries, right? You still have to, when you have a fuel cell, you still have to have a battery to keep it going, or to get it going. Not a 12 volt battery, but a real, like a lithium ion battery. So that's one tact. I am not a checker player. I, I like to play chess. And so consequently I'd have, more than one move in my head. That would be one move. The second move would be, <clears throat> would be to do a deep benchmarking exercise on, on Tesla, the Tesla that I wanna uh, try and uh, emulate. And quite frankly, we know that, um, that, we know that Tesla does some things remarkably well and other things can be improved upon. Uh, so I would be looking at what can I improve upon by analyzing a Y or a 3 or an S or whatever they want to try and compete with, and that would be my starting point. Now, in the olden days, Toyota was the best in the world at that. Uh, in many ways, they've kind of like lost their way in that direction, but um, there's plenty of there. Monroe & Associates does this all day long. They could buy reports and have a look at those, but at the end of the day, they may want to um, they may want to consider uh, bringing in somebody to give them a hand. Um, Toyota has been very good to us. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't anticipate making a commercial for Monroe right now, but um, at the end of the day, we could probably help them get to where they need to get to. So that's phase two. How do I get to where I am? Phase three. Um, they are also leading, they lead the world, I think, or they did uh, lead the world in, um, in hybrids. They've kind of backed away a little bit of that. Um, I know that, or I heard just a little while ago that somebody wanted uh, a Prius hybrid and couldn't get it. Uh, I don't know what causes that kind of a problem, but Toyota should try their best to flood the market with that, that type of a vehicle because there's still people that like that, that kind of thing. Anyway, so I don't know what happened to them before things started to turn in an ugly direction, but I'm pretty sure that, that Tesla must have something, some bag, some, something, a bag of tricks or something up their sleeve that could help them out. As far as, as, far as uh, batteries are concerned, I, uh, I think that they're gonna to have to either sweet talk uh, Tesla into helping them out with the uh, 4680s. They need to have somebody on their side. Panasonic's been allowed to sell a 4680. They can build them on their own. Okay, if I was Tesla, or sorry, if I was Toyota, I would abandon ship on whatever I've got right now and move in that direction as quickly as I can because that's the only way that you're gonna have a, a situation where you're gonna be able to move ahead quickly. Um, I, I've been telling people lately, maybe if you uh, buy a car, try and steer clear of, uh, of something that's going to be like a, 
a nice vehicle. I think in eight, nine years, it's gonna be hard to give them away. A hybrid will have a longer life in the, uh, in the buying public. There'll be people who want a hybrid that might currently be in a, in a gas vehicle or an ICE vehicle, but they're, they're gonna to wanna to have that. Um, but I know one thing for sure, Toyota needs help and they need it in a hurry. They went to the government recently and um, I think it was last month, no, months before, May and March, some, I think, and they talked to the government about, uh, about their little problems and they said that they need help, they need relief because they can't get to the market fast enough because things have changed because of the, uh, the buying climate, on and on and on. They asked for the government to help them out. That's not a Toyota kind, of, that's a GM kind of thing. So why would they do something like that? Could it be that they were infected by MBA? I think they were. So they may want to go back to their roots where there was engineers basically said we should go this way or that way, not MBAs. And I, I really truly feel that somehow they've lost their way a little bit and they should go back to their roots. That's my uh, quick take. Yeah. So you mentioned the uh, hydrogen fuel cell discs, which actually I have never heard of. So I mean, I, I, as much as I don't like that that the, the hydrogen fuel cell you know technology, I the, if if that would be possible, I think that would be the oh, best it is solution. Possible. So oh, oh it's, it's 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 great, but uh, but I'm recommending it only because they've already got the world's best fuel cell. Nobody's got a fuel cell like that. It's like 1.3 volts per cell, uh, that's, that's fabulous. I really like that. I wanted to analyze that and reverse engineer it. I'm positive that, uh, that they've got some, some trick in there or some, not a trick, but a, but a bug in there that's holding up their production. And we've been very good at solving problems. So for me, that's what I would do. I would, uh, if I was Toyota, I would look at two things. One, how do I make it so I can crank these, uh, these fuel cells out faster? and I would go out for help. And the second thing is, I would go to um, Plasma Kinetics and buy them today. As, a, as just, I mean, it's only a few million bucks to buy something like that. If they have it and they can start pumping this stuff out, they've just saved the company. It's a cheap insurance. Yeah, so I guess my question as always would be, uh, why haven't they done it, right? It sounds amazing. I mean, literally, like you would turn me, you would turn me and almost everybody around on this technology if if we can just carry this little disc and pop it in whenever we're out of uh, juice and off we go, no charging, no swapping, nothing. Yeah. Um, why haven't they? Well, first off, I never even heard of this stuff until about two months ago. I, I didn't know the stuff existed. Um, secondly, when I first heard about it, it sounded like uh, too good to be true, which most of the times that is what's happening. But uh, I know now that <clears throat> There's two major truck companies that are looking at uh, buying into um, buying into uh, plasma kinetics, and when that happens, or if that happens, Toyota's out. So this is like the GM Rivian deal, where you know they wanted to negotiate and stuff like that, and Ford came in. Here's the money, and suddenly it was Ford and Rivian, not GM. That that's kind of like what Toyota would have to do in order to make that happen. But this is a technology I've never heard of. It was kept under wraps for 10 years by first the Obama administration and later by, by the Trump administration. And, uh, and basically these guys uh, want to get their technology into the marketplace, but they have no money. Um, and, uh, and quite frankly, if, um, <clears throat> like I, 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 just, I, like you, just bought a house. Like only, I bought it yesterday. You have yours for a while. Congratulations. But anyway, uh, so that, um, that, that means that, you know, there's my money in a house. So I, I have to start thinking about what I could do. But to me, um, if I was in charge of Toyota and I had the best fuel cell on the planet, I'd be looking for a great way of making that happen. And I see no, uh, no other alternative, no other option except for that, that, uh, that little company. Very interesting. All right, so now let's move on. We talked about batteries. Let's move on to something else that's 
Tesla has, well, two more advantages, right, over pretty much everybody, um, you know, charging network. And, you know, let's say yeah. they don't get to do the, uh, they don't get to do the, uh, the hydrogen discs, you know, it, it looks like it's still very new. Let's say they end up, you know, they've already partnered up with Panasonic. Let's say they go with these babies right here, you know, and, and, and manufacture them. What do you do? What do they do about the charging networks? Do they just rely on the pretty good growing networks like uh, Electrify America, Ionity, EVgo, or do they do something different? Personally, if I was a car company and I wanted to compete, I would ask for how much it costs to, like royalty wise, to use the uh, the Tesla charging system. To me, I can I can use anything. But if I, had the, if I had the correct socket so I could use Tesla all the time, it, I, that's it. I, I wouldn't use anything else. I've used Electrify America. I've used uh, some of the smaller ones. I mean, some of the smaller ones are absolutely ridiculous. It, it'd take you a month to get your char you know, the charge you'd need. It's, it's, it's stupid. I, I'm, I'm, it's like plugging into a, a 110 or something. I don't know what was wrong with it, but I'm standing there and there's nothing happening and then after a half an hour, click, and it moves one digit. Oh, I have a real short fuse, I can't do that. So for me, that's what I would do. I, I, I mean, sometimes, you know, you have to acknowledge, hey, this is the right way to go and just go and do it. If it's gonna be sold in America, that's what I would, that's the route I would take if I was, uh, if I was to, in fact, I'd do it if I was Tesla or Ford. <clears throat> Tesla or Ford, those two for sure. Or sorry, Toyota or Ford. I keep getting the Tesla and the Toyota screwed up. Sorry. sorry. That's okay. All right. Uh, now let's get to the third one uh, where they have the biggest advantage, I would say right now, of course, is the um, self-driving technology. I know you love it. I'm not as excited about it. It doesn't really matter because it is out there. People are buying it. It is the best on the market. And what do you do if you're a Toyota CEO? Do you start developing it, uh, you know, step by step like Toyota? Ha I mean, now you got me going like Tesla has where, you know, you kind of uh, improve it with every month uh, with an update or so. Or do you just hold on, try to develop the best one yourself or maybe buy uh, an existing startup and just boom, release it in another one or two or three years when it's really ready? OK, so. <clears throat> There was a war here in the United States a long time ago, the North versus the South, and the North won. You know why? I wasn't there. I, I don't I know. I wasn't there either, but I've been told. <clears throat> because the, um, the, uh, the Americans bought a technology off of France. They didn't try and develop their own. They bought a technology called a mini ball, and the mini ball basically gave a lot better range and way better accuracy. The guys in the South tried to develop their own stuff. And um, I don't know if you heard, but the South lost. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm a fan of looking at what happened in history and applying it to business. I don't want to wait. So if I've got a relationship with Panasonic and I get the 4680 batteries, and I've got a relationship with Tesla so that I can use their charging system. Why would I ever dream of trying to come up with my own system, which is going to take three years and a billion dollars? Because that's basically what it costs. Why would I want to develop not only the software that goes along with it, but all of the crap that goes inside on that board? I'm telling you. It's Silicon Valley, right? It, it's a great place, and I, I know that there's tons of people that can do it, but it takes time to get there. And then when you get there, somebody's going to look at your product, and they're going to tear it apart, and they're going to look deeply into how you've done what you did in order to get to where you got to. And you are inevitably going to trip over a patent. And when that happens, now you have your system, which may not work as good as the Tesla system, and you're going to have to pay Tesla anyway because you got a patent infringement. To me, this is so simple, it ain't even funny. Why would I ever dream of trying to get, I, I, I made a mistake, okay? When you make a mistake, 
you lick your wounds. If you want, you can have a good cry, and then you go and do what's right. And what's right for somebody like that would be <clears throat> get, get Elon on the phone. I mean... So I, I hear you. Uh, now, let me just kind of give you a counter argument to that. You know, what if Toyota, you know, would say something like, all right, well, listen, if we're going to depend on other companies, especially just one, you know, which is Tesla, you know, then anybody else can do it. Honda can do it. GM can do it. And then how are we supposed to compete with other companies if we're all going to be relying on that one other company with this crazy CEO? We don't want to do it. Um, is there some validity to that where, you know, maybe it's better to develop uh, stuff in house and give yourself a possible competitive advantage? Okay, so many years ago, <laughs> there were two companies that came together to create this new company called Numi. Numi was a combination of General Motors and Toyota. And General Motors transferred a lot of its build technology to Toyota, and Toyota shared some of its technology, not much, with General Motors. In the end, both companies got a little bit better in different ways, and then they parted their ways, and the Numi plant is now building Toyotas. <laughs> I think history repeats itself continuously. Toyota's been very good in the past at making relationships with a competitor, and we actually, we even came up with a term. It was called coopetition. Okay, we're, we're competitors, but we both want to win, and how do we win together? And sometimes that's a good idea, and if I was Toyota, I would have a coopetition uh, arrangement with, um, with Elon Musk, and uh, I don't know, uh, this will probably go out in the evening, which will be the morning in uh, Toyota time, and I think that, um, that maybe if they see this, it would be a good idea to try and contact Elon as quickly as possible because he's in Germany right now, I think, with his new, uh, his new buildings. And uh, when Elon wakes up, hi, uh, Elon, hi, this is Mr. Whomever from Toyota. Could we possibly have a little chat? And uh, that could maybe make things happen. All right, yeah. now here's the big question for you. You know, um, a lot of times, uh, it's about the leadership, right? I mean, no doubt Elon Musk is the leader, not of just Tesla, but the entire electric car movement, you can say. And the way Volkswagen a group was turned around because of the leader, Herbert Dees, and so forth and so forth. You know, the reason Toyota is where it's right now is because of their CEO, who has been, again, very much against it and very pro-hybrid and hydrogen. Do you keep him? and try to sort of uh, fix him? Or do you think that Toyota board might be just better off getting another CEO who has the vision for electrification? Well, um, one of the big problems with um, trying to get uh, rid of a guy whose name is kind of like on the product, this, this happened at Ford Motor Company and it didn't work out really well. Henry I got the toss. Henry II put up much more of a fight, and uh, if it wouldn't have been for his brothers and sisters and his grandmother, um, things, would have been, um, things would have been a lot uglier and a lot different. But um, I knew E.G. Toyoda. There's Toyota, which is the car company. Toyoda is the name of the family who owns, basically, Toyota. So I'm going to tell you that it's going to be pretty hard to toss him out. I, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, so um, the best thing that can happen there is that he can get an advisor. Somebody that isn't going to say, oh, nice tie. Oh, you're doing everything right. Don't listen to anybody else. Just listen to me. They, they need somebody that's going to be a straight shooter that's going to help them out. All right. Well, very, very interesting. I'm actually going to follow up on a couple of these things that you kind of, as, as always, every time I talk to you, I go and research stuff and go like, oh my God, then you just open up a whole new world for me. But I have great news for you now. I'm relieving you of the duties of Toyota CEO. You can resume your Thank normal, God. happy life now. And um, I will see you next time, next month on this channel. Okay. I'll be right here waiting for you.
And there's one more thing that Sandy and I did as part of this conversation. I actually made him the CEO of General Motors as well, but just for three minutes because he just couldn't stand in the heels for too long. I put that up for my premium members. If you are not one, all you have to do is click on the join button. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Sandy's channel. I put a link to it in the description of this video. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.